for you? Of course. Vargas does not drink. He does not smoke. He does not make love. What do you do, Vargas? Oh, Tiffy. I'm terribly sorry. The MGZS 1.5 manual. It's the cheapest model in the ZS range. But that does that mean it's any good? Did you care? Why? Let's find out, shall we? MG? Let's go. Here we are, we'll never be the same And on the screens of our lives flash Words of good songs that we've not yet sung And we're not worried about the future And we're not guilty about the past We're pressing on together into joy And we'll outlast these sorrows And it's not as if we don't have to deal with our shortcomings So welcome to yet another episode of Tweet Jacket Reviews Today we are in Dudley in the West Midlands um, and we're driving a 2019 MGZS 1.5 Excite manual. This has been supplied by uh, John Newey and the team at uh, Summit Garage in, uh, in Dudley. They are a uh, MG dealer and um, this is the third review that we've been doing with them over the last couple of days. So thanks Summit, thumb it. Before I get into detail um, about the um, MGZS manual, please take a moment, if you haven't already done so, to subscribe to the channel and to like this video and leave a comment below. It all helps us to uh, rank higher on YouTube and to be able to make more of these wonderful tweed jacket reviews. I never felt such emotion. So the um, MGZS, which uh, shares the same name as a car that was made in the early 2000s, based on Renault 45, was introduced in late 2017. This is a 2019 plate car, and, and uh, being the 1.5 Excite, this is the mid-range spec. This particular car retails for around £14,500 because it's got um, this nice black um, paint finish, but you can get one in white for £14,000. The top of the range car is called the Exclusive and I drove a 1 litre turbo exclusive automatic um, on Tree Jacket Reviews back in September. I actually had that car for a week. As a lot of you will know, the uh, ZS is also available as an electric vehicle known as the ZS EV and uh, that particular one is a very popular car at the moment. It costs a lot more though than, um, than one of these. Um, the prices start at around £23,000 with a government grant. Um, so if you're looking at one of these, um, it's a lot more affordable than the electric version if that's not a route you want to go down. So um, with the MGZS in the patch range anyway, um, the bottom of the range is called the Explore. Um, the mid-range one like this is the Excite and then there's the Exclusive top of the range. Both the Excite and the Exclusive are available um, with manual and automatic transmission. Now, the automatic has actually got a different engine entirely from this. Uh, this is a 1.5 normally aspirated engine shared with the UK market MG3. All MG3s have had this engine in our, in our country. Um, and um, the automatics have a completely different engine. It's a General Motors unit um, as used on things like the Corsa and Astra. And um, that develops about 110 horsepower and is paired to a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. This uh, 1.5 um, engine and manual cars, it's got no turbo, um, it's about 105 brake horsepower and about the same amount of uh, torque in uh, pound feet. It's uh, worth bearing in mind, but if you want to choose between the two, there is a bit of a price difference. It's um, somewhere in the region of one and a half to two thousand pounds to go up from a manual to an automatic. Um, the manuals do need a bit of persuasion to drive very hard. Um, I have know that from having had an MG3 for over three years now and um, the engines do need to be worked to be held in the lower gears to make some rapid progress. You'll find it a lot easier to actually drive the automatic version with its turbocharged engine as opposed to the manual one if you want to make you know, rapid progress. That said, if you're the sort of driver who literally just um, goes around town as we're doing today, we're just driving around the centre of Dudley today, um, 
and uh, just goes up and down the motorway, goes for shops. You probably don't need any more than this, particularly if you prefer um, a manual gearbox over an automatic. I personally prefer the automatic. Um, I like the character of the car with an automatic gearbox. I like the turbocharged engine, but it's really up to you. One of the things that a petrol ZS um, does have, and this is shared with a car like a Sanyong Tivoli, is uh, different steering modes. Um, we've got um, urban, normal and dynamic. And I always put a ZS petrol into dynamic mode immediately when I get in the car because it waits for steering up considerably. Now, this is an electric steering setup, it's not a hydraulic system, and so you won't get the same amount of steering feel as you would um, if you were in uh, an MG3 for example, it's got a hydraulic setup, but it does make the car feel a little bit better than if you go for the um, urban mode, which is far too light. It's just way too light. Um, and even with dynamic mode when I'm uh, um, driving this and parking it, I don't find the steering's too heavy. The ride in, an, in a, a ZS, and this is common to most of them, is uh, it's pretty good, um, it's a softer ride, um, but just bear in mind this is not a sports car, it doesn't pretend to be, um, and it will not corner like something like an MG3 or an MG6. So once you've uh, headed out of town and you're on your way down to um, the countryside as we are now, what's the MG ZS like to drive um, on a twisty road? Well, you put the steering in dynamic mode, as, as I've said, Oh, more bongs. If you put the steering in dynamic mode, as, uh, as I've said, there's not the best amount of feedback, but actually it's better than a lot of cars I drive these days that have steering that's just far too light and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't adjust the steering mode in most cars. Um, yeah, the soft ride's quite nice. You, it will roll in the corners, um, but it holds on nicely enough. There's no danger of you kind of fishtailing it or anything like that unless you are the more enthusiastic driver like the Planet Auto team are. Um, they will tell you lots of interesting stories about how they drive the ZS's nice and fast, particularly the ZS EV. Um, but you know, this is true jacket reviews, we drive in a moderate fashion, and so this is perfect for someone like me. Now, the rarest version of the petrol ZS that you'll find, and this is only available with a 1.5 engine and a manual gearbox, is the Explore. Because the Explore doesn't have air conditioning, doesn't have rear parking sensors, and um, really is quite sparsely equipped, um, you don't really see too many of them on the road. The difference um, between this and an, an Excite, like this car, is only about £1,500. And if you are looking on monthly finance, then you actually find the Excite is worth more on the second hand market, and so the PCP deals on um, an Explorer are just not even worth bothering about. That's why most people just step straight up to the Excite trim and we've got um, this lovely touchscreen in the middle that's got Apple CarPlay as standard. Um, we've got rear parking sensors, we've got automatic lights. Um, the seats are trimmed in this manner reminiscent of a Mini Metro from the early 80s which I kind of like but it does look a bit like your grandmother's car um, if you know your grandmother had a Mini Metro in the 1980s. We've also got the steering modes, as, uh, as I've said. Um, we've got some nice alloy wheels. We've got some nice silver um, roof rails on the car and some you know, bits of body cladding and things like that. Um, I'd recommend going at least for Excite specification. If you really want to sort of indulge yourself though, you can go for the exclusive, like the one that I had um, on test uh, back in September. The uh, automatic one I had was top of the range. I had a tri-cut dynamic red metallic paint, which was, looked great. Um, that one um, is a little bit more expensive than an Excite, but you get uh, it's a nice, nice leatherette trim, you get a reversing camera, you get sat-nav, you get um, these um, lovely diamond cut alloy wheels. Um, the car looks very, very smart indeed, um, but it's up to you whether or not you want to spend that much more money. As I've mentioned, um, if you're looking at a, a ZS, particularly a brand new one, chances are you'll be buying it on finance. So let's look at some finance figures for this car. The uh, ZS 1.5 Excite manual. Now the list price of this car is uh, just over £14,000. If you were to buy it on a PCP deal, which is what most people do, um, then MG will offer you a PCP at about 5.9%. Um, 
over a four year period and bear in mind that a lot of people drive only 8,000 miles a year so we'll just use those figures to say 8,000 miles a year the car will cost you um, £179 as you'll see from the decals on the side of this particular car um, per month the deposit that you would be looking to put down would be about £1,300 and that G will give you a £1,000 deposit contribution as well which is superb um, and um, at the end of the four year period the car will be worth about £5,200 which will be your balloon payment or final payment when you come to the end of the agreement. That's just a typical example of uh, buying a ZS on finance. Now bear in mind that I've driven both pre and post facelift MG3s and um, so I'm very familiar with the engine and gearbox combination. The gearbox is actually very nice in this car. The pre facelift MG3s had pretty nasty gear knob, this is a lot better. Um, the engine doesn't particularly kind of make the most melodic noise, um, it's not the most sporty car to drive. And as I said, the gearbox needs to be worked quite hard if you want to make rapid progress. But uh, yes, compared with that car, it's a bit of a larger footprint, but if you want more space, and this car does have a lot of space in it, but it's well worth considering, because uh, the two cars, if you compare them side by side on a finance deal, aren't actually that different. Honestly, I do prefer the ZS Automatic to this one, but um, I wouldn't say this is bad. It just feels a little bit underpowered. Anyway, let's uh, look at the ZS's more practical side for those who haven't seen my other two ZS reviews and take a look in the boot. Coming round to the back of an MG ZS, we open the boot by using the Oxygen badge, which is a very nice touch. Same capacity as the ZS CV and the ZS Automatic, 448 litres with the boot floor lowered. Now we've got the boot floor today in the raised position, it does help you load a little bit better, um, there's less of a lip if you do that. If I lift this up, we'll see underneath this car has a tyre repair kit, but you can get a space service spare wheel as an option. In the side of the boot, there's space for a bottle of water and other odds and ends. Overall, this is a very, very good practical boot. It's one of the Zealous's best assets. One of the best things about any ZS is the amount of rear space. Absolutely loads of headroom. This is my driving position. I'm 5 foot 11. Need room is very generous too. Also, if you've got anybody with mobility challenges, it's really easy for them to get in and out. The seats fold as well, so I'll just demonstrate by pulling this lever here. Unfortunately, if you then put them back in position, the belt buckle is now trapped. There's no little groove where you can put the belt buckle to stop it happening. The other thing um, that's a problem as well, there's no rear armrest. You can't get a rear armrest on any ZS, ZS even the EV. Also, because this is a petrol ZS, uh, there's no USB port here. There is, however, a very large place just to beside the console there, which is ideal for putting a Furious Driving branded mug or a large pork pie. One of the things you'll notice straight away in the back of a car is the hard touch plastics in here. But to be honest, that's the case with virtually every single car in this class, um, even some of the Volkswagen Group cars, which generally you know, are known for good quality cabin materials. This feels very plush actually. Um, we've got this leverette on the doors. Um, the cars all come with four electric windows. There are also map pockets in the back of the seats and we've got some nice grab handles. There is a lot of space in here for not much money. If you're comparing this with something like, I don't know, a Nissan Duke or something like that, uh, which is a car often that is said to be in the same class as this, there's so much more space than one of those. There's actually uh, more space in the boot of a ZS than a Nissan Qashqai and that's the car that's supposed to be in a class above. Accessing the front of a ZS is incredibly easy. In fact, I think it's easier than a, a, an HS or a GS. I totally clock my head less on this than I do on either of those cars. 
What's worth bearing in mind with this Excite trim, or indeed any ZS petrol, is you can't get a panoramic sunroof, and the centre console is completely different. We've got rather a basic centre console here with, thank goodness, a conventional handbrake, conventional five-speed manual transmission, and uh, some cup holders. The ZSCV has got a totally different um, centre console, which um, bears virtually no relation with this at all. But of course, being a high-tech electric car, that's what you'd expect. Um, I also forgot to mention the fact that this car does 0 to 60 in about 11 seconds, um, which is faster than the automatic version, funnily enough, even though that has a bit more power, uh, and that you'll get somewhere in a region of 40 to 45 miles per gallon, depending on how you drive. So, with my secret mission documents, um, they didn't fit into the glove box of a ZS petrol automatic, they didn't fit into the glove box of the ZSCV. Let's see if they fit into this one. No. No, we don't. Never mind. Um, not suitable for smuggling mission documents across the border, but this car does have a lot of other practical features. The door bins are certainly big enough for the secret mission documents. Um, we've got um, a nice area here with a 12 volt socket and a USB port. Um, the uh, headlight switch is right on top of the dashboard here. Uh, that is a really good place for it. And the dashboard itself, um, I know the, the doors are hard plastic, but the dashboard is made of a nice soft touch material and you've got these uh, sort of lovely air vents they remind me a bit of a certain premium German manufacturer but I can't tell you about for legal reasons um, and then we've got the big touch screen in the middle which is available on um, the Excite and the exclusive trims and this particular car is fitted with Apple CarPlay or sadly not Android Auto only the EV gets Android Auto the heater controls in this car are the same as the facelifted MG3 and the ZSCV, they're incredibly easy to use. Um, there's the temperature control, there's the fan speed, and there's the other buttons there. They feel very high quality. There's something a sort of, I don't know, a Volkswagen feel to them somehow. Um, also in this particular car, uh, we've got the lovely steering wheel, which virtually all MGs now have, even the HS. Um, although this doesn't have any red stitching, it's just normal black stitching. The dials are very, very easy to read. Um, I like the fact that they're conventional dials. There's no colour screen in the middle like you get in the ZSEV, but uh, the white um, backlighting is very pleasant. One thing this car doesn't have, which is a little bit unusual, is a proper temperature gauge, same as an MG3. You only get a light for the, if the car's too cold and too hot, and if that bothers you, maybe uh, it's time to look elsewhere. The central touchscreen itself, uh, I believe this is a 7 inch screen, um, when it comes on I'll just mute it if it happens, which it did, so I'll just mute that. Now uh, we've got different steering modes in this car and you access them by going to the car mode um, and then click on driving and maintenance. Uh, I've got this in dynamic mode which is the weightier setting for the steering. Um, we've got start stop as well in this car which you can turn off if you don't need it. Um, and then you've got follow me home lighting. This car does have uh, DRLs which are LEDs but it doesn't have full LED headlamps um, only the HS exclusive uh, has full LED headlamps in the MG range um, but um, you can fool most people by thinking that they actually look like LED lamps even though they're not um, the interface itself is very easy to use it reminds me to be honest of something like an iPhone or an iPad um, I've paired it successfully with my phone with uh, Bluetooth but I don't have a, an Apple phone so I can't use the Apple CarPlay functionality um, if you have the USB uh, memory stick or something like that you can put that in and uh, look at videos and pictures too if you're familiar with any MG post 2011 then you'll find these indicator and wiper stalks to be very familiar indeed, although we don't have the little blue buttons on the end like you would have on an MG ZS EV. The door locking switches are just here, the door pulls feel nice and high quality, uh, the door bins I've mentioned are a good size. Um, the window switches, they're not as nice as on an HS, but they are very similar. Um, the uh, faux leather on here feels very nice and uh, overall it, it is of a very good quality particularly for the price of the car the steering wheel controls are very simple to use we've got um, the selection buttons on this side and uh, the stereo controls on the other side we've also got a button for the telephone system here in terms of visibility um, i would recommend going for the excite model or above because we've got rear parking sensors or you can get a, a you know, reversing camera on the exclusive model 
The forward visibility is absolutely fine, although on no ZS, including the EV, can you get um, parking sensors. They are only a dealer fit option. Right then, what do I think of the MG ZS 1.5 manual? If you're not a demanding driver, and you drive mainly in the city, where you want to save money, then this is a fantastic option. The gearbox is nice, the engine's reasonably economical for this type of car, but I can't help thinking that I want a little bit more, and so I personally would go for the one litre automatic. Oh, <laughs> excuse me, I'm terribly sorry. Sit down, number two. So we'll discuss your neighbourhood project later. Thank you for watching this episode of Tweed Jacket Reviews. My name is Joseph Lloyd, I'm an independent vehicle consultant. I find cars for people. Please uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to do that. Don't forget to like this video and to leave a comment below. If you wish me to source a car for you, I'd love to do that. My website is www.lloydvehicleconsulting.co.uk. Please use the contact me page on my website to get in touch. I've got a Facebook page as well. It's facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Thank you. I never felt such emotion And what can I live Just, just to know, know Just to know You are there You are there Hold me in your arms Don't let me go I want to stay forever Closer each day Hold that away what? Let me be the one Who you Clip to the so one you can rely on closer each day. Oh. Home and away. What a tune. Were you fobbing?